to you. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen of the Mecca, and well, I'll tell you what, I've been watching a lot of videos lately about a guy called John's Arcade, so a tribute to him, I'm going to start on the video the same way as either. So we are in the. No. Loving them. <laughs> okay, but. You have to excuse me, guys, because. I'm in the middle of having my supper here, but I thought I'd make this video well. I had the chance, while everyone's in quiet and everyone's in bed. Okay. I was what? Thinking about what to do with that empty Italian job card, I decided to basically unempty it. There's not, there's no point in just getting something and getting rid of it because things get you down. But you can get frustrated sometimes. So I'll give you a brief history on what happened to that Italian job cabinet. I did a short video, but I've not uploaded it yet. I'll upload it after this one to let you see what I was up to. No. This power supply here was in Coronation Street. Coronation Street, we turned it on one morning and my son he likes to play them for a laugh and the free playing, he's eight year old, he likes flash of lights and whatever. He said it wasn't starting up and then it was starting up and resetting and I turned it on the same night, starting up, resetting, resetting and then it didn't work at all. So I thought it was first it was the motherboard. The board does, did have tiny wee bit of battery damage on it. But, excuse me for the coffee drinking, but fuck it. It didn't, wasn't the motherboard because I swapped the motherboard from Italian job into Coronation Street and I'd done exactly the same thing. Resetting and then wouldn't start at all. So I knew it wasn't, I knew it wasn't anything else in the cabinet because Nothing else wrong with the cabinet, nothing wrong with the ROMs. All oh, the interconnects were fine because I checked them and serviced them. All oh, the fuses were fine in the power supply, so it has to be the power supply itself. And these make a power supplies are a pain in the arse. The part of the reason so many mega machines get thrown out, there's a relay in there and it burns out. If I just turn it over, there's a the culprit there. You see, they're deceptively simple on the outside, but these are actually quite complicated bit of kit. A good thing about them is they've got a bit of a 5 volt regulator, so there's no Voltage regular is anything to worry about on maybe a motherboard. What they do have, I don't know if you'll be able to see this because it is quite dark. It's deceptively dark in here. Is a relay. I don't want to put two capacitors for the minute, but the, re the relay is the source of all the hassles. That relay there tends to burn out. It's responsible for switching the 12 volt from the power supply to the board, but it also switches the 50. The reason for that, I think, back at the time of making it, make it decide that it would be a safety feature of that if there was a fault on the main board, nearly your 12 or 50 volts would work. Problem is, that really is handling pretty damn close to its maximum allowed load. It's handling about six and a half amps and its maximum is supposed to take is eight. So it's taking a hell of a load any time it's working. And you probably can't see it because like for some reason video cam digital cameras don't make good video cameras, but you probably can't see it, but it's pretty badly scorched in there. And I expect when I take this board off, I'm gonna find a bit of a mess in there. And you can see as well, it's got loads of dry joints. Probably, it's hard to focus on the camera, but I'll tell you right now, everyone was, and you can actually see it, everyone in the solar joints is dry. They're not reflecting the light. And they should. See if I go up here. 
See right off that soldier out there's reflecting light. That one there's reflecting light. These totally dark. They're cold joints, they're dry joints, and they're actually cracked. Which means they're not making a very good connection at all. You can see some more down the dark colour there. So, based on that and the fact that it, we weren't really seeing any switch over the 12 volt, I know this really is bad, and I know these dry joints are a problem. So I went to my local Maplin today, oh, well they had, actually had something in stock. Replacement really. So what I need to do is change this really out. Change that one in there for the new one. And that should hopefully solve the problems. And we'll reflow all this mess in here as well. I'll actually reflow every joint on the board. You can see they're totally, totally black. That's not surprising because these power supplies are plugged, been plugged down maybe 20, 30 times in the lifetime. And again, if anyone's got these one of these power supplies, you've got to be a bit careful. When you take it out, don't. Don't, just can, don't undo that screw there. Undo the one next to it. That screw there is for the regular itself. But you can undo the heat sink instead. And then that whole bit will pop out. And then it's just a case of that, that there, that, that there, and two poppers. And then you can't go wrong with that main connector because it's a keyway the enemy. But if I take that out, reflow that, check the underside of the board because I'm assuming more dry joints under there. And I'll be back with the results. Well, it turns out you do need to undo that another. My mistake. Well, a wee bit better. New really is installed. Now refold all those connectors there. Hopefully that should be that working. If it's not, then I'll have to get the multimeter out and start looking at the VSense socket. But let's see. Good things folks. Well, there's proof. Power supplies in, installed and running. The board is booted up fine and flashing in like a trooper. Causing the problem was that there. And the dry joints. Let me just go to show you. If of course you don't succeed, try and try again. And persevere with these mega repairs because they're not clear cut. You could have sworn that that was a board fault when you first saw it. First saw the symptom I had, but it's not. It is working wonderfully. Flashing away beautifully to itself. I've had this on for a few minutes now. No problems at all. Absolutely fantastic. So, another one saved. I'll leave this running for a while. Might start working the pillow one up tomorrow. So that's all for tonight, guys. And I'm going to have a good blast on this now because I haven't had it on for two weeks. So I will see you later. If you can see it or not, but it's a really job cut out again last night. 
week at all the dry joints under there. It's really important that when you're doing the soldering work, you lift this strip and check that you soldered both sides. Focusing very well at all here. Um. You can just see it under there. It's sold it perfectly in the bottom, and under there's a mess. So I've lifted that strip, so that out just now. At last, we have success, boys and girls. It's a bit more complicated than I thought. It would rise your in the power supply, yep. It was bad, really, yep. But even after all that, I still had issues. Turned out to be a little dial D3 in the power supply. Nothing wrong with the dial itself. Refold the solder, solder looked fine. Looked fine. That's a tiny wee defect in the solder joint on the component side. And the only reason I noticed it is because I was buzzing around with the multimeter. And I was trying to get a reading off the D3, and D3 wouldn't give a reading. All the other ones read in circuit and out of circuit, and D3 read out of circuit. And my solder went back in and read in circuit. Put the power supply back together and it worked. So, live and learn, check, check, and double check, guys. And if it first you don't succeed, go to sleep, wake up, have your breakfast, and try again. Anyways, I don't think I've got a video on this doing anything at the minute. So, a few spins. Did you know the light? I know that kind of alarm thing that's going on. It's just because the back door's open. Uh, yeah. Running sweet. this game at the minute. Could be a dip switch either not set up right because that board was in and out a few times. Okay. So you get the gist of it. Uh, just a reminder to you that when you're doing one of those power supplies, refill the edge connector on the power supply, the pin header, lift the plastic strip and refill on the component side of the pin header and reflow all the components as well because even though the solar joint looks good it might not be. As I found out overnight, yeah, you heard that right, overnight. I sat up to four in the morning working on this thing. Because it worked for a bit and then it wouldn't. But anyways, bye for now.